Hello, thanks for joining me. This is day number six of Holy Week. This is part number six of this study. And thanks for joining me. I, in the previous parts of this study, I gave you the calculation of how I came down to which day of Holy Week it would be. This is Wednesday, April the 13th, 2022. I know in some of the parts I said 2020. I apologize for that. Um, I think COVID's made me two years to run together. So, but this is, but my concept here is to follow Jesus chronologically on these days so that we get to know him and lean into him and get to love him, love him deeply, love him more. See, we talk about Jesus gets me, God's got this. But the thing is, my question is, okay, Jesus gets me, do I get him? What does following Jesus mean? Jesus summed it up and said, following me means that you deny yourself, take up your cross and follow. That's tough. Die to yourself. Most people challenge you to become more and more like Jesus. Well, you can't be like Jesus unless you die to yourself first. And we need the spirit of Christ to help us do that. <laughs> and so here we are on Wednesday before the Last Supper meal. And Jesus has been spending the nights in Bethany in that leper colony that Mary, Martha, and Lazarus operate. And we're just, it's just, it was a late night on Tuesday night. It was that night where they had the for, long formal dinner where Mary anointed Jesus um, and poured out a year's worth of wages on his feet, anointing him for his burial. And he uses that as a teaching point. And so it's Wednesday, and it's a silent day. Well, there's two things I, I want to point out about Wednesday. This being April the 13th, Wednesday of Holy Week. One is, Jesus spent a lot of time today with people individually. See, he wanted to spend the Last Supper with just his 12 disciples, but he had a lot more people that followed him, that counted on him. He would have had a lot more people up in that upper room for the Last Supper meal, for the Passover meal, because they all would have wanted to celebrate the Passover with the Messiah. But that wasn't the intention of God. That's not what God's will was. But Jesus took the time on Wednesday to spend time engaging with people and explaining why. And they understood that even though they weren't included in the Last Supper, they were deeply included in God's plan. Have you ever been disappointed by not being included? It's important for us to understand that man might not include us, but God always does. Jesus took the time to include people. Now, in God, just like everything else, it's about obedience versus disobedience. When God speaks to our heart and gives us a calm about something, we've got to accept that calm and not choose to go back into the chaos. We've got to allow peace to come over us. We're not included in the Passover meal. That's disappointing. But Jesus explains it to me and gives me peace about it. See, that's the heart of Jesus right there. And then also it was the day where Judas made the final arrangements. What was he thinking? Yeah, yeah, it was about money. But, you know, the thing we miss about Judas, and we picture, he was a zealot which was a particular part of uh, their religion, which meant he was very passionate, you know, he was very passionate about his belief system. And contrary to the picture we have of Judas, that he had horns and a spear and dark eyes, he was actually very engaging, very likable. He would have probably been the nice guy among the disciples. And he was handled the money of the disciples as well. He, his whole 
I'm going to just jump into what I feel like Judas' motive was. It was not unlike the rest of the disciples who really wanted Jesus to come out strong as the Messiah that was going to set up the earthly kingdom. Jesus, however, never made any bones about it. He was never interested in being the king of an earthly kingdom. His was an a spiritual, eternal one. Always. He always made that clear. But the disciples, they didn't hear it, just like we don't hear God when God speaks to us at times. They weren't listening. They only heard what they wanted to hear. Judas felt like if push came to shove, Jesus would shove and establish himself as an earthly leader. That all Jesus needed was a little confrontation, boom, and Jesus would come out and be in charge. Roman domination gone, religious leaders gone, Jesus would be the theocracy. And he could live with that. And he tried to make that come to pass. The problem is, that was not God's will, number one. Number two is, he did it in his own strength and power, manipulating and, and being manipulated, and then it all comes down to this silver he received, right? It, there was money involved. And so it was on this Wednesday that the final things were done. The final uh, hint was given on how they were going to plan Jesus' arrest. Judas is thinking, I'm going to plan his arrest, and then there's going to be an uprising, and we're going to march in there and take over because he knew that Jesus had enough followers that were camped out in Bethany and Bethpage and outside of Jerusalem for Passover with him. So Wednesday is a very interesting day, and I hope you accept these challenges as, as from the Lord, and if they are from God, may the Holy Spirit bring them deep into your heart like he has mine if this is just me, if it's just Mark Royer, I hope you don't think about this again. But if you think about it, tune in for part number seven tomorrow.